sunset at the park, and as the residents of Koala Creek settle down for the evening, on the other side of the world, Graham and James are in the thick of the emergency response as they battle to save koalas from the bushfires in South Australia. As soon as we landed, it really hit home that it's real. Definitely something which gets your heart pumping. One of the wildlife parks out there was having 100 koalas coming in a day, seven days a week. It's just huge, huge numbers. A billion animals are estimated to have perished in the fires and so many others are injured. Graham and James are part of an international effort to rescue native species, but nothing can prepare them for the devastation. It's dusty, it's dry, there's no bird sounds, there's no cricket noises, there, there's just nothing there. I've never witnessed so much death and destruction, just countless amounts of bodies just laying there, unfortunately singed from the fires. The fires were so hot that some of the animals died of the smoke, and then when the fires were burned through, all we found was bones. It really kind of hits home that it is life or death. We're in a, an area called uh, Cuddly Creek. It's been an area that's really hard hit. You can sort of see behind us um, a lot of the areas and a lot of the trees are just completely gone and, and devastated. To say what we're seeing is, is emotional, it's an understatement. It is just devastation, it's just black and brown. There's, there's hardly any colour left, um, which is, um, yeah, pretty bleak. Many of the burnt out trees are eucalyptus. They're both home and food source for southern koalas. With the species already genetically weak and prone to disease, the devastation of so much habitat could be the final straw. The loss of the eucalyptus all over South Australia is a massive loss to koalas. They only eat selective leaves of certain trees and without any trees at all means that it is desperation. Some of the areas we were going to, we were seeing koalas in burnt trees and they were literally grabbing leaves, they were grabbing branches, trying to eat them, but you could literally take the leaves and crunch them up in your hand and it was like cereal. It was so hard and so dry and these poor koalas had, had absolutely no choice. Throughout our driving, we did come across one small male, Blaze. He had quite severe burnt hands, but not only that, he had been burnt all over got cauliflower ears where they'd all been singed and his whole fur was almost matted and greasy from the ash and the smoke and the flames. Um, that will stick with me forever. That one koala, that one scenario and um, that one poor little soul. Graham and James are helping at Cleland Wildlife Park outside Adelaide. The original home of four of the koalas back in Wiltshire, it's now at the heart of the bushfire rescue. Cleland was a bit of a whirlwind. There was hundreds, hundreds of koalas coming in daily. Everybody driving along the road was just picking them up and bringing them in, and they were wandering into people's gardens. So Cleland were trying to respond to that as best as they could. The plan, as soon as stepping out of that car, was very much head straight in and get stuck in as soon as possible, which we did. They were filling up their quarantine facilities, their vets were running around trying to medicate and test and, and get these animals in a good position. I was down with the main site koalas, really getting stuck in and helping cleaning them, feeding them, and generally just giving them a good health check. And actually during our time there, we actually had the military come and join us as well to feed, build pens. They did, you know, they dug trenches for us to lay, lay fences in. Yeah, just a, an amazing community effort, really. I think one of the most uh, amazing things, and it's a memory that will stick with me, was a lot of the koalas that they were able to save were actually the joys that were still attached to mum, but mum had sadly uh, passed away, and they needed people to feed them. So James and I were given a koala, um, and my, my mum was Bobo, and he was my koala, and he had a little bird nose, I remember him. You know, they, you take a, a baby koala and you pop it on a teddy bear, you wrap it in a towel, and you hold it into you so closely, and it kind of... <laughs> You 
you know, you see them come in, and they were coming in in their hundreds. Sorry. And you just got this little bundle in your arms. It's um, yeah, it's special. We'll hear more about Graham and James's experience a little later in the show.